Hi everybody and welcome to Crafty Studio. Um, so I'm Anne-Marie for anybody who hasn't been on our channel before. Thanks so much for tuning in. You're in my very messy studio at home. This is uh, the last Friday before New Year's and uh, those days where you're not quite sure what day of the week it is but I've decided to uh, do a bit of sewing. Um, and I know I've a few things I've made um, this quilt behind me slowly getting quilted. It's just covering a load of junk at the moment. Um, but I do have a few things that I made, but I left them in the shop so I can't show them to you. Um, I will do a vlog about those things. Uh, I'm wearing my Christmas billy from a few years ago with little sparkly cuffs. You see those? Sorry, it's not great light in here. It's getting so dark so early. I can't wait for the longer days. So I want to show you my little Christmas present to me. So I have um, an older brother sewing machine. I absolutely love it. Um, I got it second hand when I really got back into sewing. Um, and it came with one of those so easy tables, you know, the table that it inserts into. And I love it. But every time I get it serviced, there's something else that goes wrong with it. It just kind of reminds me of my last car. Uh, it got to a stage where it was costing more and more in parts. And I thought, oh, this isn't really worth keeping at this stage, but I will get it serviced. I'll get it fixed at the moment. It's, I spoke to Michael and he said it's, um, the chip in it that controls the pedal that gives the information to the machine that's broken. So that's a whole big part. So I was like, uh, okay, right. I'll bite the bullet and get myself a new machine. I do use my sewing machine every single day. I know I'm trying to justify this. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. So um, basically what I've decided to go for, it's behind me here and I'm going to unbox it and show you what I've, I've got myself. And it's um, a Singer heavy duty machine, but it's the equivalent of my old machine. So it has loads of bells and whistles on it. It's electronic and things like that. I do have a Singer heavy duty I use in the shop for teaching on. It's a good solid basic machine. But for my stuff I'm doing at home myself, I like to have those extra things that I want to use it for. Plus I want to do a lot of free motion quilting while the other machine is able to do it. I like to have a machine here and one in the shop because moving them around too much, especially if they're electronic, is not good for your machine. And I think that's the problem with my old one. And Michael did give out to me for that. He said like really with electronic machines, you shouldn't be lugging them in and out of cars. And that's what I was doing, bringing it to classes and things. So it's kind of my own fault, but I have a new machine. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you now. So here, cheers. Ta da! So it's a Singer Heavy Duty 6805C. Okay, um, I'm gonna open it up here and I'll show you what it comes with. So it says it has lots of stitches. Oh, I'm dropping my microphone, sorry guys. Um, <clears throat> generally, I only use like a couple of stitches. You only use your straight stitch um, and a zigzag and maybe the lightning stitch. But for some things like buttonholes, a machine that does a good buttonhole, you know, is worth its weight in gold kind of thing. Um, and then I've started using some stitches with like wavy lines and things for quilting. Because, well, I prefer free motion quilting, but there's all the little bits and pieces. I might switch it to the overhead. Hang on a second. Yeah. Okay, so that was, you know, all the usual things that come with your machine, your guarantee, how to put the bobbin in. If you're new to machines, it's worth reading these because there's little tricks in them that can really help. So, la 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 la. Okay, my bag of bits. <coughs> it's all usually the same stuff. These guys always go missing on me. Should be a little small one in there too. I can't see. Oh, there it is. That little thing. It's like they have a mind of their own and they just spring off and fly everywhere. We've got a few feet here, so I'll have a look at them in a second. Um, oh, walking foot. Lovely. Um, dust cover. I actually will use this in the shop for a different machine because I have a big dust cover that goes over my sewing machine and table. So I'll use that for another machine. Um, in the classes and that. Oh, I think this then pulls out. I might have to put it on its side. 
Oh, I have to be very careful here because I hurt my back a little while ago and I slipped a disc or herniated disc, I think they call it. Um, so I have to be very careful in the way I turn and I lift and don't drop your laptop is a good idea as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that would not be a good idea. Okay, that's back in there. Okay. We're okay. Just the pedal on the floor. That's the pedal. Oh, it's one of those pedals with the two-part thing. Oh, that's really cool. Except for when you lose them. Um, so I'll just show you really quickly. So it's one of those pedals. This is in my old machine. I think when they go up a step, they tend to be a bit more like this. So a basic model machines, these cables are attached. And what I find is you can never quite stretch one over to the socket and the other one for further towards yourself. So it gives you a bit more leeway. And it's like a jack for, you know, from headphones. Now, if you're of the younger generation, you won't know what a jack is. <laughs> Headphone jack. The thing that always broke after you lost the spongy bits on the headphones. Oh, I thought someone was coming in. Oh, so there's my plug. Take off these cable ties. These are dead handy, these cable ties for things. I tend to keep them all for wrapping stuff up in that little pluggy thing. So give that a stretch. Hoo -hoo -hoo, this is going to be exciting. So I'm, I'm just going to open her up and show, show her to you. We'll have to have a good, have to name her. I don't know, why is it always a her? Why is the sewing machine a, a female? Is it a female? It is in French. Does anybody speak French? Ooh, ho, ho, ho. I'm going to put it on the side so you can see it. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. So there's a little plastic thing here. I'm just going to take that off. Lovely. Gosh, it's heavy. It's a very heavy. Oh, that's a heavy machine. So it's a completely metal, which is really cool. I've um, got styrofoam all over me now. Uh, can I plug it in from here? Don't think I can. I can turn it on, but it has some gadgets. So this is great. If you, um, this button is what, basically the reason why I went with this one, here I'll switch over, you can actually see my face. So the reason why I went with this machine in particular, we'll put her here, we put her here. Oh, there she is. Oh, look at her. She's gorgeous. So the reason why I went with this machine is that it's very similar to my old one and I kind of got used to it. Um, and there, there's things that I really like about it. You can do a push button. You don't have to use your pedal. So you don't have to use your pedal, which is brilliant. So say if you wanted to do, I use it a lot for free motion quilting um, so that you get an even speed. Or... If you're somebody like like me i suffer with my back so sometimes pressing the pedal when you're doing a lot of straight seams can be exhausting and what you do is you just move this for your speed your little speed dial i think it's brilliant um needle up and down so you don't have to turn the wheel um that automatic back stitch i find this is a bit slow and kind of annoys me a little bit so i just press this for back stitch um, and then automatic cutter which I love because also apart from automatically cutting it holds your thread you know in thread when you go to sew again and it just goes back up <laughs> and you have to re-thread it again and it usually gets stuck somewhere in there <sighs> that's the point where you go I'm going to make myself a cup of tea because you thought you were sewing and you weren't it drives you mad okay so um, it has all the basic stitches here like one to nine, which is very like that Janome one they had on the Great British Sewing Bee and it has big chunky buttons on the front and I just love the look of it. And I think Tilly and the Buttons used it um, or they had it in some of their demos or something. Um, so yeah, that that's a, uh, yeah, that it's kind of like that with these basic stitches on the front. But then if you wanted then to get your other stitches, they're all on these little tiny cards, little cards that are in here and they pull out. My put hang on. Let me just lift it up here. Hang on. I'll put it under here and we'll look overhead again. 
you can see. So on, at the bottom part here, there's like these little drawers that pull out and they tell you all the other stitches. Now my old machine used to have it on the top, used to have it up here. But the only thing with that was you had to lift this up and if you're, which like I do a lot, you know, use one of those um, uh, large cones and a cone stand. It would get caught because it was all up here and that was really annoying and I didn't like it. Um, so that was one thing that bugged me. So let's see. I'm glad that's, that's down there. It's nice and tidy. Your usual stitch length and uh, stitch position. And then you can click, there's a button there for memory. So you can hold that and then have your, you know, preset nut buttons. So you there's a, it's in the manual. It shows you how to do it. Um, and you can do your preset buttons. I remember thinking, how do you know so much about these? It's like, we sell these. <laughs> so I know a lot about these machines. Um, this is your, the free arm. I love the way the free arm comes off like this. It just goes on and off smoothly. Sometimes some of the machines you're like, mm, weaving out of them. And of course your little snack drawer. Pop in your few bits there. Has the usual snap on, snap off foot. Which reminds me what came in our bag of gadgets. Let's have a little look see in the bag of gadgets. <laughs> so this is a walking foot. I will be doing some videos related to the um, patchwork parcel about things like walking feet and bits and pieces like that. So this is a singer walking foot, the usual crack. So if anybody doesn't know, the idea of a walking foot, this bit, can you see, goes up and down. So it's, imagine it's on your machine like this and this bit goes up and down and it grabs your fabric. So it's like feed dogs for the top as well as the bottom. Um, this is probably all the same kind of stuff that they give you for most Singer machines. Some extra bobbins, always very useful. This little gadget. Oh, he's your friend for opening and closing things. A few of them now. Um, this is for my walking foot. It's a spacer. I think that's the name of it, but I'm not quite sure. And you put that in there and it can give you equal distance between the different lines. Uh, extra spool. If you're doing um, twin needles, this little thing goes underneath that spool, so you can put that on top of there and it just helps it turn. Um, gadgets to hold the thread on. I'm gonna put them in the bottom where my, because I don't want them to go missing. Buttonhole foot, what I do recommend um, for the automatic buttonhole foot is write your name if you go to classes on, on it. And then also put the machine number on it because I have a couple of different machines and they all look the same. They look identical, but they're not. They're completely different and then it won't work. So do that. Note to self, do that. Okay, other feet. Regular zip foot, lovely. Uh, we've got two edge feet here and what's this guy? Mm, now, a, a see-through zigzag foot. Well, um, it's kind of like a universal foot. That's really cool. Handy to be able to see things. This is for doing embroidery. Can you see it? Because it's clear. It's very open, the foot there. Can you see that? And then these two ones, these are quite cool. This is for, you know, you'd use this part. Can you see it has a, like a little, see that it has kind of like an edge on it. It's like an edge foot, but it's an adjustable edge foot. And this looks the same kind of for um, <clears throat> doing kind of stitch in the ditch and you can adjust it. How do you adjust that? Oh yeah, you can move it in and out. That's quite cool. I didn't have one of those. I love that. Um, and this guy, is that a piping foot? I'm going to look that up. I'm not quite sure. Let's have a look. In my little book. Nothing in there. Let's 
Maybe it's written on the box. Sorry guys. Uh, I wonder what that one is. Hang on, I'm gonna look at the side of the box because it actually has it written on the top of the box what all these different things are. Anybody know what that foot is? I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know what that foot is. Maybe one of you guys know. I should just describe it. <coughs> now, if I ask Claire Louise Hardy, she'd know exactly because you, Claire. Louise, if you watch this, please tell me, because I know you know every single foot inside out and upside down. I'm going to show it to the camera again. Can you see that? Well, I do have a visitor now. And it has kind of a little spring there with little holes on it. So I'm not sure what that is. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little visitor. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, not sure. If somebody knows, let me know. Um, I'm knowing me, I'll probably go down a rabbit hole on the line later and see if I can figure it out. So let me get these guys. I'm gonna put them all in here for safekeeping. Pop all them in there. Oh look, you get some extra needles and a button hole. Or a you know, a button foot. I don't trust these guys. I'm sure a lot of people do. I like to do my buttons by hand. That's nice. This is, and then obviously the one that's on the machine itself. What one's that? Let me see. Let me put it overhead. That's quite a nice foot that it comes with. It's like a universal foot, but the front of it is clear. That's really handy. So you can really see what you're sewing. That's dead handy. Um, yeah, so I'll pop in there. Oh, sorry, a bit loud. Oh, ah, put a foot back on it. Where's the foot then? Oh, and there's a bobbin in it as well, so you get, what, three bobbins? Now, I've plugged it in, so I'm going to turn it on. Let me just fold this down a little bit more. Oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> I'm easily impressed, aren't I? Okay, so let's have a look here. Oh, nice big display on it. So I can see that's a bit bigger than my last one. Sorry, I'm, I think I'm, maybe I'm going on a little bit too much and you're sick of me, but um, that's very cute, isn't it? The, the dial, I, you can't see it on the, can you see? Oh, you can. Can you see the dial? It's really quite large, the screen there. Um, and then for to change the stitches, says it's a very reassuring bip I'll have to play around with this a little bit oh you can reverse the stitch oh I love that this button here reverses your stitch so if I have that one I can change it that way so can you see that if I press this button reverses the stitch I like that because I've been doing things before you know with these fancy stitches I'm gonna oh, I wish that was upside down and that way you won't have to change your fabric because you know the way you want to have the bulk of the fabric to the left I like that okay so I need to figure this out there's a save button hmm I wonder what that does okay and a repeat button and then we can change this I'm loving this I'm gonna have a good play around with this guys um but thank you so much for watching um uh, me just basically open oh my christmas present um a lot of fun oh i think i forgot about things like it has a dial on the top so you can change the pressure on the pressure foot which uh, my last machine had as well the only thing that doesn't have is a knee lifter but honestly i thought it was a great thing to have at first but i never use it and i actually forgot to put it back on when i was taken out to be serviced once and then uh, realized i'd never used it so not a big deal um yeah the pressure foot that's handy if you're using anything thick if you're doing like a coat or something i know a lot of people use walking feet for things like that but um i don't know i don't like i i actually don't really like using a walking foot i don't really like straight line quilting i prefer free motion quilting 
but I think that's just a personal choice. Maybe with this one, I will. With this new walking foot. You never know. <laughs> anyway, I'm waffling here now. So um, I wish you all a happy new year. If I don't get a chance to do a video between now and the new year. Um, hopefully I will and get, go to the shop and get my other makes and show you to them, show you them. Um, and also have some videos coming up about um, the patchwork parcel um, that went out. Uh, over Christmas so uh, thanks again for watching please do like and subscribe little bell thing down the bottom so you can see the next videos and hopefully this place will be a bit tidier by then chat to you soon bye bye